I've improved my athletic performance and longevity biomarkers by minimizing my high intensity workouts and training in zones. In December, I walked into LA Fitness and saw their prominently featured HIT studio. Each month, men's and women's health comes out with a new article focusing on high intensity interval training. And Instagram is filled with the latest workout challenge. But most Olympians, professional athletes, and longevity experts are focused on boring, old, steady state cardio. The stationary bike and Stairmaster have new life. But that doesn't mean that high intensity workouts should be omitted either. That's why my VDOT running program focuses on training in zones. So what are the five training zones? How is my training programmed? And how is this helping me with not only performance, but longevity? Well, let's get into it. There are five training zones based upon exercise intensity, and typically they're measured based upon a percentage of your maximum heart rate. And since maximum heart rate varies a lot between individuals, you'll preferably want to test your own with a fitness test. Now you can Google maximum heart rate fitness tests if you're interested in finding that out. But you can also estimate what your maximum heart rate is using the formula of 211 minus 0.6 multiplied by your age to get your estimated heart rate maximum. With me being 30, this equation estimates that my HR max is about 191.8. Now let's get into each training zone and I can detail how my training is structured between each one of these. Zone one isn't so much training as it is avoiding a sedentary lifestyle. Anything from walking, taking out the garbage, or doing your laundry are light activities that can bring your heart rate into this 50 to 60% of your HR max, which is zone one. And it's where my beautiful treadmill desk sits into an active lifestyle. Typically I'll spend about three hours per day on my treadmill desk while I'm at work working, walking at a pace of about 1.75 miles per hour. It's how I achieve over 25,000 steps per day on occasions. And it's also led to office guests walking by and ooing and eyeing like I'm a zoo animal, but it's a good icebreaker. Light activity increases blood flow throughout the brain and body, which is not only good for general health, as your smartwatch might remind you every hour or so to move, but it's also good for performance too. Zone one can be considered the active performance recovery zone. This light activity can help enhance muscle healing and is also good for relieving muscle soreness. Typically I'll avoid being sedentary for more than an hour and then I'll hop on my treadmill desk or even just go for a quick five minute walk. And what I notice is the better I am with my zone one activity, the more my muscle soreness and fatigue from previous day's workouts are alleviated. If I don't do the zone one activity then I notice that the soreness from the previous workouts lingers on. Zone two is the Stairmaster your grandma bought back in the 70s. It's something that you could perform for up to two hours if you had the time to. And although zone two training is not talked about much, it's not very trendy, it's what a lot of professional athletes and longevity experts are focusing on most. Since zone two training is meant to be performed for over 30 minutes, it needs an energy system to fulfill those energy demands. And that is where the aerobic energy system comes in. It primarily oxidizes fat for energy, which is much more robust than say stored carbohydrates. The goal of zone two training is to perform maximum exertion while still primarily utilizing this aerobic energy system. For untrained individuals, this is steady state cardio where your average heart rate is in the 60% of your maximum heart rate. But for highly trained individuals, this number can creep up into the 70 and almost 80% of your maximum heart rate. And a good measure of this training zone is activity that you could perform for at least an hour where you could have a conversation if you wanted to, but it's slightly uncomfortable. When I was researching athletic training plans, what I was surprised about most was how much time athletes spent on this zone two training. Olympic runners, not only in the 10K and the 5K, but even the mile and the 800 meter races are doing zone two training for most of their miles throughout the week. And since fat provides a lot more energy than say stored carbohydrates, it becomes fundamental for athletes to become really efficient using this aerobic energy system for performance. It allows you to sustain a much higher level of output or work without that buildup of lactate in the body, which is associated with fatigue. Efficiency with this energy system is also paramount for metabolic health too. After months or years of consistent zone two training, your cells in your body will restructure so the mitochondria is closer to the cell wall. This will allow your body to oxidize fat more efficiently utilizing this aerobic energy system. And in many cases, this is the training that will reduce your insulin resistance and reverse any sort of signs of diabetes. My current training allocates over three hours per week to this zone two training. And you can see that in my training plan below, which I talked about last week in both the easy runs and rowing sessions. Ideally, you'll want to spread out the zone two training over at least four days throughout the week. 
I won't cover zone three as exhaustively as I did with zone two, because like I said, many trained individuals will become very efficient with the aerobic energy system and their average heart rate for these workouts might be in the 70s, almost nearing 80% of the maximum heart rate where they still get the benefit of utilizing their aerobic energy system. But for most people, the intensity of zone three training will demand more energy than your fat oxidizing system is capable of generating at this time. And the body will transition to the glycolytic energy system. This system utilizes stored carbohydrates in the form of glucose to generate energy compared to fat. While not as efficient as generating sustained energy, it is great at providing higher energy needs and a shorter duration. So let's jump to zone four where we know almost all individuals will be utilizing this glycolytic energy system. This system provides energy for short bursts of higher intensity activities. And while there's enough fat on the body to last you days, there's only about 400 to 700 grams of stored carbohydrates in the body. And those can be used up fairly quickly. The burning of glucose or these stored carbohydrates can also lead to the buildup of lactate in the body, which can cause fatigue. But training at this intensity will allow us to be efficient within the glycolytic energy system. This allows us to clear lactate quicker, it will also let us perform at a higher level with higher levels of lactate and increase our VO2 max. Typically my threshold runs have me running in this 80 to 90% of HR max zone. And so you can see from my training plan that I'm usually running these threshold runs at about a thousand meters or one mile at about four minutes or seven minutes respectively within a one minute rest period before going back to it. And I'm doing this training two days a week for a total of 45 minutes. Lastly, there's zone five training. This is where your heart rate is going above that 90th percent, nearing HR max. And depending on your type of training, this is where the ATP PC energy system comes in. ATP PC stands for adenosine triphosphate phosphocreatine. I didn't know that until I looked it up. But this system generates bursts of energy for up to 20 seconds. It's ready on tap, but it quickly runs out. This is where high intensity interval training does come in and it can be used to develop speed and power. And it's become trendy because you can burn more calories and less time with zone five training than you can with steady state zone two cardio. But as I've discussed, if you only did zone five training, then you wouldn't be getting the benefits of zone two training, which develops the aerobic energy system. That's why it's best to train in multiple different zones to get a breadth of the benefits. For me, this will be my interval and repeat runs that I'll incorporate into my workouts as the phase progress in my training plan, but I do run strides a few different times a week, and those are just 100 meter near sprints that take me about 15 seconds to perform, and then I'll have about 15 seconds of rest, and I'll repeat that about six times. And I should note that these three energy systems that I discussed today are in use all the time. It's not like as you switch from one zone of training to the other that one energy system turns off and the other one turns on. It's just that based upon your energy needs, the utilization of each system will vary greatly. And that's why it's beneficial to train in multiple zones so that you can focus on developing these various energy systems that might be used at a higher level at different zones. So here are my final thoughts. Detailing these three energy systems makes it easier to understand why it's important to train in multiple training zones, not only for performance, but also longevity. If all I did was walk on my treadmill desk all day, I wouldn't see increases in performance for my 5K runs. And I also wouldn't see that my power and speed would be able to be sustained through age. Alternatively, if all I did were 100 meter sprints, then I wouldn't be able to recover that well. And I wouldn't see increases for my metabolic and cardiovascular health so much. And while I don't think that everybody needs to be on a performance oriented training plan like my VDOT running plan, I think it's important to train in multiple of these zones. It could be as simple as doing a 45 minute zone two training session, say cycling on a bike, with a few intervals at the end for high intensity, and just do that four times per week. Something like this while limiting sedentary periods throughout the day is great for both longevity and performance. Thanks for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.